Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you going to do the? I can do the roll call. Okay. Would you call the roll? Um, so, Strutter, Commission Secretary Adrian Ung, uh, calling roll. Um, please verbally confirm your attendance. Uh, Rod Axtell here. Here. Ronald Barnes here. Here. Nicole Kohler here. Here. James Goodermont here. Here. Kathy Gustafson here. Here. Cynthia Hunt. Absent. Cynthia will be here in a second. <clears throat> um, Ian Klein. Here. Ronald Lindell. Here. Grant Peterson. He's absent. Uh, Steve Peterson. Here. John Stanley. Here. Jay Taylor. Here. Mark Thorson here. Terry Weatherby here. Being here. Okay, thank you. Um, next up, we have some minutes to be approved, and I'll call on these uh, separately. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes from October seventh, twenty twenty-one? So moved. Second. Moved by Taylor. Seconded by Thorson to approve the minutes of October seventh during the discussion. Yes. Oh, go ahead, Tom. Um, Stanley. Sure. This is uh, for, I'm sorry, for which are you the t shirt? I said, we're seven. That is what we're doing. 2021. 2021. Okay, I had two in my packet. I had two copies one red line said so marked red line one. Yep. And I didn't read it. Well, I read them, I didn't read them word by word to notice that there's any differences between them. Um, and um, there was on page four of four, uh, page seven of the packet. There is a vote carried eight zero when everything else was nine zero. We'll look back at that because I think there are more. Okay, yeah, so any extensions that are missing? Yeah, the one right above. Top of the page, amendment by ordinance amending city hall charge five revenge initiative referendum and recall motion carried eight zero. Immediately afterwards, there was a motion to adjourn to answer whatever the motion to move. Mm -hmm. and so. Does this mean we have to put the uh, put it off till 2024 now? <laughs> Probably <laughs> that we have to go back and look at the uh, Unless you've got it. Uh, look at my numbers. I don't know that it's important, but I think it's important. It's important to have it right. So uh, the attorney's going to look uh, at the notes. Okay. I'm assuming since everything. I have eight zero. Uh, yeah, I have eight zero. I mean, no, somebody left yeah. stepped away. But the following motion was approved nine zero to adjourn. Um, Came back. You know, I have eight zero. And oh, sorry, it's true. The values one for public. Uh, new ranks. Somebody, and the third yeah. maybe we're still up again. <laughs> How about we table that? Okay. People just want sure. to come back to it. And I'll like, get the meeting here. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll see what I can figure out. So, unless there's an objection, I'm going to lay that particular sure. on the table. And next up would be 3.2 approving the minutes from May 5th, 2022. If there are any questions, I'll move. It's been moved by Commissioner Lindell and seconded by Commissioner Thorson. The discussion of the minutes of May 5th, 2022. Hearing no discussion, we'll come to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 I apologize. I'm a little bit short, but I'm just it's not it's nothing important. But I'm listed twice, so the head count is wrong. Beginning, I don't think it requires any more formal activity than that. But the May fifth, twenty twenty two. Yeah, Thank you. 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 Um, I'll note for the record that <laughs> Commissioner Hunt has arrived. Next up is item 3.3, which is approval of the minutes of July 7th, 2022. Right here, motion to approve those. So moved. Seconded by Commissioner Taylor and seconded by Commissioner Forrest. Is there any discussion on those? Commissioner Stanley, maybe I should just preempt preemptively yeah. call you. <laughs> okay, no problem. Um, this is the July 7th, 2022. Let me just bring that to the top of my mind here. 
Any other discussion? And we'll come to a vote. All those in favor of approving those minutes, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Um, that completes section three. Uh, there's no unfinished business in section four. So we have two items in the new business section. I'll call on the I call call now item number 5.1, which is city attorney and signature requirements. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so um you, can you advance the slide? And yes. I'll give you a clicker. Uh, so, if you recall, there was a bit of discussion last time we got together about signature requirements. Uh, it had we had discussed it back I believe in 2021, and um, it came up at the staff level as well. Um, we are seeing the number of contracts that we have grow. And so I spoke with um, Chair Peterson about how he would like to handle a uh, potential discussion um, because there was discussion at staff and a little bit here at the Ch Charter Commission. Uh, and it has been a section of the charter that we have amended in the past. So um, the chair suggested that I tee up a little bit of background information for the group, and then you all could perhaps have some discussion and give staff some staff being me. Um, some direction about how you may or may not want to proceed. Um, I don't have a recommendation, um, a formal recommendation. I, I, if you would like, I'd be happy to participate in the discussion and provide additional information along the way. Um, I did sort of hit the highlights in the in the slides here, um, but obviously there's a lot more nuance that I, you know, didn't get into uh, because we'd be here all night. Um, but I'm happy to. Um, provide some ideas along the way as we go through the discussion. So I thought I'd hit on four top areas. Uh, the contracting process, so you have some information about how we route things internally within the city. And then the use of templates. Um, and then the two specific charter sections at issue are at, at discussion. And then um, the delegation that um, was created, the delegation authority that you all created by amending the charter and then how we use that here internally at the city. So next slide. So with regard to um, volume, so to speak, um, this last year, I think we processed 931 contracts, so nearly a thousand contracts, and um, our volume increases year over year. I say that because during 2022, as Adrian knows, we put in place several um, efforts to decrease the number of contracts that we were processing and yet our numbers still increased. I think if I had to guess, I think it's a function of a couple of things. Um, we were still coming out of COVID uh, and there were a lot of amendments, um, a lot of amendments of time and of dollar amount. So um, that just adds you know, to the overall volume. Um, but I say it because every year our volume and we have relatively the same amount of staff that are working on it. So we we sort of feel it um, qualitative, quantitatively in, the, in our work. So um, bless you. with regard to how we the contracting process is uh, sort of plays out, there are two main ways that we see uh, contracts come into legal uh, for review. And um, that is by city staff who are asked by vendors or identify the need to have a contract in order to basically spend money um, or, or um, do something. Uh, and um, they will generate a contract based on, well, most of the time using their templates. The other way we see it is from vendors. Um, we have vendors um, such as software vendors who send us their voluminous contracts. And, um, and what we do in those instances most often is attach a, what we call the cover page template. And that includes the, the language that we um, are required to have in our contracts because of state law. So we had sort of clip that to the top and then we read it. You know, we read this voluminous contract and we try to get them to change, for example, the venue to Minnesota from you know, Texas or Pennsylvania or whatever. And some other things, but that's sort of the kind of the two avenues that, it, that the contracts come into legal. Um, and then there's also um, something called state contracts and other sort of 
ways of contracting that are out in the world um, in Minnesota, and there are those as well, but the majority are through these two kind of avenues. And then with once they come into the department um, for review, then uh, uh, our, each of our attorneys is assigned various departments. So for example, I work with the HRA and the port and creative placemaking, uh, and other other people are assigned sort of different departments. Uh, we look at the number of contracts from the previous year to decide how we're going to average that out uh, because our attorneys also review RFPs, um, which have contracts in them. So um, uh, when, once we complete the RFP process, uh, then it turns into a contract. So we have to review the contract beforehand because there's a form of contract in the RFP. So it's coming at us kind of from a variety of different uh, sources. Uh, oops, stay there. Uh, and then, um, and it, so the attorneys are reviewing those um, those contracts, but then we also have decided a couple of years ago that there was a sort of a tranche of contract types that our paralegal could review because they were um, overwhelmingly uh, static in nature because they were only requests to change the dollar amount um, or extend the term. So sometimes stuff can't get done in the time that we originally thought it could get done and we have to add another month to it. And so I still review them before I sign them, um, but our paralegal does the, the paperwork on that. Um, and then um, once the contract terms have been finalized and there's sort of a, a back and forth between staff on that uh, and the contractor from the outside of the city, then there is an internal electronic process that, that starts. It goes to the department director who has to sign off on it, uh, essentially confirming um, that there that this contract should happen, that there are funds for it, that there are that you know nothing has changed along the way and they decided to do something else. Um, so we created this check and balance in the process during COVID. Um, and we decided to keep it in place because it works really well. Um, and then after it's approved, then I'm the first signature um, and I review um, the, the document um, and uh, I'm required, as you will see in the charter, to review and approve it. And uh, once I do that, uh, then it goes to typically the mayor, uh, city manager, or just the city manager or just the department head. It kind of, we have a, a, a signature matrix about who signs my contract through our requirements in state law or in the financial management policies. Uh, sometimes I see things that um, need to be fixed and we don't proceed to contract signatures. It goes back and there's some fixing that gets done and then, and then I'll sign it. Next slide. So you might think, how many templates does the city like the size of Bloomington need? <laughs> I did some math um, earlier this weekend. We have about 50 templates, um, which might sound like a lot. Um, I thought like, wow, a lot of templates, um, but they're kind of in categories. And then there are, um, within those categories, um, there are like sort of somebody wants like engineering, for example, they want like a couple of different basic things, but they've got a little variety. So they've got like a whole bunch of different kinds of fruit, but they're all fruit. Um, so I got, I gave you some examples here. We have a lease. Uh, we have a couple leases. We have some engineering type contracts. Like I just referred to the fruit, um, metaphor there. Um, we have special events, um, uh, and those talk about policing and garbage and all the things you would think of. And then we have performances. And I gave this as an example to the chair when we were talking about this topic as something that could perhaps be not really need my signature. So this is like the piano playing contract. Um, the teddy bear band, um, you know, those kinds of contracts um, for typically smaller amounts of money and typically very little changes in the template. Um, and then we have a, a large, large category of service contracts. So this is everything from delivering gravel to um, uh, building legal contracts, uh, the whole gamut. Those are just some examples. We have lots of other ones, but those are just some template examples. So what city staff do is they select the template that fits their needs and we, we have trainings with them um, to, uh, to know how to, which one to pick. And then um, if they have questions, it goes to the paralegal and she helps them answer those questions. And then we have a form where they fill in the details. So they put in the name of the vendor, um, they sort of 
pick out the kind of insurance that they need based on the training that we've given them. Um, and then it goes to the attorney, the assigned attorney to review it. Um, or in the alternative, if they're not using our contract, if it's a vendor contract, then the, then the staff will send that vendor contract directly to the attorney. And then we will kind of negotiate the general rule of lawyering is that lawyers talk to lawyers and staff talk to staff. So um, if it's something that the lawyers think that the staff can work out, like details, um, then the staff will work that out, like what time or how much. And if it's lawyer stuff like insurance and indemnification and subcontracting, then the lawyers talk to lawyers in general. That's very, very uh, simplistic, but that's kind of how it goes. Um, and then we um, have a portal that we use to exchange the edits back and forth. And it sort of does a redlining tracking thing. And, um, and then it goes out to the vendor for final signature and approval. Um, and sometimes they, they say things like, we don't have that, that, that much insurance. And so we have a little process in place where we can work through those challenges. And then um, every single contract that requires a certain kind of insurance has a certificate of insurance requested. That's reviewed and entered into our system. And then, uh, and then it gets routed for signature. So there's a pretty robust process in place and we review it on an annual basis. We seek feedback from staff. Um, how is it going? What should be fixed? What's not going well? Um, and we tweak it. We also review our templates on an annual basis, um, both for sort of readability. We try to keep the readability at like a, somewhere between a high school and a college um, level um, of uh, English for readability. And then sometimes there's just changes in the law. We have to just change things. Um, and, uh, and then also too, sometimes we just get a lot of feedback <laughs> feedback from people that they don't like certain provisions and we think about sort of, could we do this better? Could we do this in a way that it's easier for people to understand? Could we do this in a way that costs them less? Um, kind of those sorts of things. So um, that's background on how we sort of process contracts at the city. Um, and this is the, these are the two provisions in the charter that relate to um, uh, contracts, well, there's lots of them, but these are the two that are at issue with regard to the role of the attorney. And I highlighted the word delegate, which unfortunately you can't see it with this bright light, but that black word there is the word delegate. And um, that was the language that I came and asked you all to, to look at a couple of years ago. And you, and what you did was create this delegation authority, which, um, which I requested because, um, even if I was out of the office, there was no, like if I was on vacation, there was no mechanism for anyone else to sign. Um, and when you get to the volumes that we're at, it's just a lot, it's just a lot. So um, it would have been fine, um, you know, probably now with doctor signing, I could have just, you know, just always had internet, I guess I just marched on. But back then when we were working on this, we didn't have things like DocuSign. And I was like frantically signing things before I would leave for vacation. Um, and then everything would just sort of, screeched to a halt while I was gone, which is just, you know, could certainly has some room for improvement. So you all created this delegation authority. And if you go to the next page, um, this is, uh, I created a policy and this is the policy that was, um, we had two amendments because originally you, you had me um, able to uh, delegate it to an assistant attorney. And then our office grew and it created deputies. So we had this weird thing where the deputies, my deputies couldn't sign. I had to give it to their direct reports. And so we cleaned that up and now it's a licensed attorney um, who I can delegate it to, but typically I delegate it to the civil attorney um, on the civil, uh, the civil deputies who I, Peter, and many of you have met Peter. I delegate to Peter most of the time. And we work on our vacation so that we're not out of the office at the same time most of the time. Um, and then if we ever are, I typically delegate then to the most senior civil attorney, um, which in this case would be Kevin, for those of you that know Kevin. Um, and so here is um, what the delegation says. So if I'm going to be out of the office for more than three days, um, then I'm required to delegate. And I do that in an email. I lay out the process um, and who's going to be signing and, um, and then they um, have that responsibility while I'm away. If in the event that I'm 
it's unscheduled, you know, I get hit by a bus or something horrible, um, then there's a process in place for the delegate sort of proxy process. Um, I, I use this every year. I take an annual vacation every August and I use this every year and it works great. I periodically take um, other vacations and it works well. Um, I will say that um, if something happens in your brain and in your in your person where you have to sign on that line every time that you review and approve the contract. And I have collected feedback from our attorneys who have had to do it while I'm away. And they have a newfound appreciation for my responsibility to sign. And um, so I, I, I appreciate the ability to have this delegation and I think it serves a good purpose. And I think it's very reasonable approach that we're taking at this point and it, and it works well. Um, I let's see if there's one more slide on this. So this is the point that we can have some discussion. Um, I think it's working well, um, but I do think that there are some very simple contracts um, and there are about 130 of them a year that, uh, at least there were last year, um, I think that was the number, somewhere around there, low 100s, um, that are these very simple amendments, you know, to, to extend time. Um, I could also perhaps get you numbers on, um, you know, how many teddy bear band contracts there are, or I'm using $50. Um, if that's something that you're interested, we do these fabulous contracts every year for River Rendezvous, um, which are our favorite contracts in Lego. They could probably be matched out, um, you know, they're for somebody who's giving demonstrations of how to write a little bit, you know, things like that. Um, but then again, um, we've talked about this internally, like, does it really matter? And, um, if I just keep signing these, uh, because every now and then I discover something and I'm like, maybe we should talk about this. So, um, I don't have a please change this kind of recommendation, but if you did want me to come up with some specific recommendations, I, I would have some ideas. Commissioner asked how the, uh, I'm assuming that the language has been used in terms of being able to delegate. Obviously, it would give you, would, uh, give you that ability while you're in the office, as well as you know, outside the office, correct? Adrian, can you go back a slide? Yes. This is what it says right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I could change the delegation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because if that word only applies when you're outside the office, and mm -hmm. that seems to me it captures your ability to, to run your legal practice inside the office when you're here. You know, just the other comment that I have on those simple contracts, and it's a reminder in our business, is that uh, is that we get sued more on tax returns than we do audits. Mm -hmm. The risk and the liability is greater with that little dollar amount. Is the bigger number. So the question I have is that those 90 contracts or whatever, if you were to sit back and score them really for a practical matter as to how often it blows up yeah. with other communities yeah. and you put them in ABC pools, is that I think that kind of answers the question as to what has to be looked at and what doesn't have to be looked at. Sure. Um... I, I, I give that uh, point that you just made uh, a lot of thought on a regular basis because our city tort cap uh, liability uh, does not change on a $50 teddy bear contract <laughs> and a $5 million contract. We have the same tort cap liability. Um, what? Get blood poisoning from a quill pen. Yes. <laughs> uh, right. So I live in the world of issue spotting and um, and a simple a one page contract doesn't necessarily have less financial risk to the city than a 25 page contract. Um, so I appreciate the comment and I, and I don't disagree with it. Chair Peters. Um, when it sounds like typically when you have the need to delegate to someone is you know that ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And, um, if there's something coming up while you're out of town, big HRA thing or whatnot, uh, are the people who, how well versed are the people who are uh, going to be potentially signing uh, while you're out, how well versed are they typically in uh, 
uh, some of the more complicated ones. I mean, I assume you have to brief them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chair, I um, before I go out of town um, for any like a you know a vacation or something, two weeks before I go out of town, typically um, I send an email to my executive staff and, and to attorneys, and they always know I'm going to be out of town, but uh, and say I'm going out of town. Um, I'm going out of town these days. If you have something that you need me to work on uh, to talk to me about, please do that by X date so that I have enough time to get it done before I leave. Um, for that, for you know, in part for that purpose, um, and then we always schedule a meeting, um, like a day or two before I leave, um, with the deputy, typically the deputies, um, or if it's going to be somebody else, and we run through all of the sort of pending business, and we, because of the workflow, and you see that sort of back and forth that we have, we typically know what's coming, um, and so we either get it done before I go. Or the person's been briefed to know what's happening, or it waits for four days. Okay. Usually, that's usually it's not. It's usually the agenda packet cycle that's driving a lot of that stuff. Mr. Kohler, do you share the same confidence with a sudden extended absence, not without the ability to review and stuff before you go? Uh, Chair, are you are you asking? Um, it, do I have a conference? How would I handle that if I was to have a surprise sickness? Yeah, like would you be, like uh, the question was like how do you prepare before me was how do you prepare like for being able to leave? Are they are they well versed enough and being able to review the contract? Yeah. If you didn't have the ability to be able to kind of prep before yeah. you leave, mm -hmm. would you still feel pretty pretty good about it? Or uh, chair, um, we have a structure in place where um, the there's I'm the city attorney, and then we have two deputies. Um, one over the criminal division, one over the civil division, and then we have a manager over the compliance division, and then we have a manager over the risk and litigation division. So um, I have two deputies and like sort of four managers. And um, the although they're sort of in their in their column, so to speak, um, they are all licensed attorneys, uh, and they um, they. They have the capacity to know who to go to to get the answers that they need um, when they need them. The other thing is that because our process is structured um, as it is, and that people are sort of assigned different departments, people develop uh, specialized knowledge um, in those areas, and we all know what that is. So when something comes in, for example, on um, a nuanced human rights issue, I go to Peter. Because Peter used to be the counsel for the human rights department, so he likely knows the answer, and we we know each other's areas of specialization. So we typically already do that. Um, and the one other thing I'll add is that on Tuesdays we have our civil meeting, and we run through sort of everything that's going on on the agenda, on this upcoming city council agendas, as well as um, like things that are happening that we want to talk through or kind of brainstorm as solutions to. So we all have a fairly decent understanding of what each other is working on. Clear questions? Sure, Stanley. Uh, it's not clear to me why this is before us if we don't have a recommendation. Chair, um, I, um, I received a request from staff that I work with to um, to come up with a to uh, ask you all to remove the delegation. Um, and I talked internally about the not the delegation, excuse me, the signature requirement. Um, we are one of the few cities that has it. Yeah. Um, and. Um, and sort of asking me, like, do we really still need it? Um, and so I spoke with the chair uh, in advance of this meeting about, I don't know, six weeks ago or so. We talked through it, um, sort of the pros and the cons and the benefits. And um, and his recommendation, the chair's recommendation, was that we have a discussion and um, get your all's feedback. Um, and uh, I could share, I, you could tell me to come back next year with a specific edit if you wanted. Um, or you could say, everything's fine, soldier on. Um, you know, the other idea that we talked about um, 
the chair and I talked about is that the, the charter language says that I have to review and approve that specific language, review and approve. Um, and another thing that we had talked about many years ago, for those of you that have been on the Charter Commission for a while, is that other, other jurisdictions have language reviewed as to form. Um, and so, for example, a lot of the counties have that reviewed as to form. So, if, for example, if they're using the template, I've reviewed those forms on contract, and um, that's a sort of a different, um, different kind of signature attachment than reviewed and approved. At that time that this group talked about this, I posed this, this edit a couple of years ago. This charter commission as an entity um, did not want that change. They wanted reviewed and approved. And the chair and I talked about that as well and, um, and decided not to bring that forward as a formal recommendation, but to rather have this discuss this discussion. <clears throat> One thing I just want to follow up on what the attorney was talking about and um, from a history perspective, you mentioned that this is a somewhat unique yeah. charter requirement. There's not a lot of charters that have this specific language in it. And this goes back to a period in the 1980s where there was a contract signed at the city by the mayor at that point um, that didn't kind of go through the normal processes of the city. Um, and it ended up causing quite a bit of heartburn for that to happen. And so this this was this was put in the charter as kind of a barn door closing oh. exercise around that particular contract that was signed. Um, and so I think one of the things you have to do is you have to look at the fact it's not very common in charters. You also have to look at the fact that it, it's, it's, it's very strict and probably is a reactor to something happened, you know, almost 40 years ago um, and say, does it, does it still make sense for every contract to go through this kind of that the committee described, which is what the council of decided at that point, which are next to help. Well, I certainly would, uh, would be open to have staff come back with a recommendation in terms of what could be changed based on what other communities are doing, keeping in mind uh, and kind of that uh, um, balance between risk and uh, and convenience. Any other comments? Or I second that. Commissioner Kohler. Uh, yeah, I do not disagree with that idea. Um, also, just wanted to share, I guess, with this process, it feels very uh, familiar and important to checks and balances and I appreciate what it is and what it does. And I just, yeah, I just, I'm for how it is and keeping it that way, I guess. I was just thinking about, excuse me, that is the history chair. Uh, something at work that drives me nuts and it was a, a very similar kind of thing. It was a knee jerk reaction to an isolated kind of incident. And it's like, it just carries forward for yeah, uh, When can we please read this? Mr. Hunt, about the question. Can you hear the machine? Oh, sorry about I was just saying it, it, I think it, it's worth revisiting. I think about something in my workplace where um, there's a policy in place that was just basically a knee jerk reaction to something very similar. And it's not really very good policy sometimes to continue to follow it. I think it's always worth Any other comments? Yeah, I'd be in favor of revisiting it for sure. And you know, you don't need to keep doing things over and over when maybe there's not a need any longer. It's, I didn't know the background. It's helpful to hear that. So um if if the majority of the commissioner commissioner agrees, it seems like there's kind of two a couple of ideas floating around. One is one that the attorney and I talked about a little bit, which was to <laughs> keep the overall process, but try to carve out some set of things that are that could not have the signing occur. So like you could say like teddy bear band and will, you know, will training and stuff like that and have a long list of things like that. Or more realistically, like dollar amount below this, it's a template and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and we could either choose to to put that in the charter, um, mm -hmm. or we could say to the city attorney that it's up to the city attorney to kind of decide what where that line is, and that that as a matter of policy, they would decide where that line is. Um, the other option that we could have is we could say that. Um, you know, in a kind of modern office that's run the way it is today, 
does this really belong in the charter anymore? And I know Commissioner Coley that kind of goes against what we're saying there, but okay, yeah. But what I'm what I'm trying to do is to I think we we have to, we're, we're going to need to vote on something today to direct the attorney to come back with something. I think we need to be a little bit more specific than just like oh changing it is the right thing. So folks have thoughts on where they'd fall on set of options, Commissioner Hunt. I don't know that I'm in favor of putting any specific dollar amount. I think we've got that elsewhere in the policies and so forth, but to put it in here gets to be micromanaging. But, and I guess I don't have that much of an issue with the word that, but was there something specific that, that staff was suggesting that that be changed to? Um, Adrian, could you go back a slide? Yes. I think, uh, Chair, um, there's probably two different ways to tackle any particular edits in the future. One would be to edit the charter language here. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, for example, remove review and approve and just say review as to form, for example, what would be a possible edit. Or the other way to tackle it might be um, the more in line with what Commissioner Axtell said, which would be to potentially broaden the delegation um, so that it would allow for not necessarily con less contracts to have to be signed. All of them would have to be signed by attorney, but some subset could be signed. The delegation to sign them could be delegated to the attorney that worked on them as opposed to me um, uh, uh, for some subset of them. Um, and I could figure out, I could sort of run some numbers. We run the organ, we have the numbers run by department and by, by person who works on them. Um, and I could have them run by type of type of contract as well. I know, for example, that the paralegal that works on them only is allowed to work on one subset. So that's why I knew that number. Um, but I could sort of run the numbers and see, for example, is there a tranche that we could put into the delegation um, that would broaden that delegation? I could bring that back next year. Chair Peters, go ahead. A couple, couple things in the mind for me. One is the, the dollar amount. But we've already discussed the fact that sometimes the, the risk is just as great with a just as great with a low dollar amount. Um, so I'm wondering if there, as we move forward, be if there's some way to assess somehow the riskiness of something and that you know has a higher threshold. Um, if that were to uh, be the case. Um, so the relative amount of risk somehow. Uh, and then the other thought I had, if, if, if we're seeing the same contracts kind of year after year, they do not change or do not change substantially. Uh, and I, I can see like new things might require uh, some extra attention the first time through. And if it's generally kind of a, a repeat with some changes of the contract, appears to me that might reduce the risk level and um, uh, can be something that could be reconsidered. Uh, and then finally, um, because I had the same question about whether this should even be in the charter the way it is, mm -hmm. um, and I know you're very good at presenting sometimes a couple of options, and one might be, here's what we, here's what would, uh, uh, the staff is recommending if we were to keep it in the charter, and here's an option where it is alluded to in the charter somehow, and then uh, it becomes more of a uh, staff and city council initiative to set policy. Wonder if that makes sense. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead. I was just gonna expand on what Commissioner Garson had said. And on the one hand, when you're talking about rating and the risk, it reminds me of I live in the world of risk ratings and and, and all of that, which means. Um, in the simplistic sense, who's going to sign off on and approve? Who reviews it beyond my hey, who's who signs up? The ultimately how the bank sets the reserves, uh, improves strength and stability, and so forth. So there's a whole lot of matrix in there, and I don't know if we want to get to that level of rating, but somehow um, building on that that assessment and thought. I'm, and I'm going to ask I'm going to ask a couple of questions. And We'll just have people kind of do I agree? They're going to kind of be do I agree with that statement? So, this is to kind of give the attorney some direction. So, the first thing I'm going to ask is in 6.07, uh, it was suggested that instead of saying must be reviewed and approved by the city attorney, to say it must be approved as to form. Okay, and so 
Um, does anybody have any questions about that change? Go ahead. The, uh, since I've been burnt for the last two or three years by contracts, the word must scares the bejeevers mm -hmm. out of me. Yeah. Because that is, that is pretty clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, it's not black, it's not white, it's must. Yeah. So being able to take those types of things, those types of things into consideration, I think is really important. Okay. And uh, um, again, my point is, is that uh, to give this give staff more flexibility, allow efficiency, maybe save some time without increasing our risk. Um, is that if this can be redone and brought into the year two thousand twenty three, that uh, that makes a lot of sense. Just a good business decision. So um, regarding that language there, where it says must be reviewed and approved. Um, I'm going to ask people if you're if you're okay with considering a change that's that changes it to kind of the more standard form that large, larger organizations sound like they use, which is must be reviewed as to form. And just okay. raise your hand if you're must be reviewed as what as to form. Okay. Raise your hand yeah, if you yeah, would yeah. support that notion. Of support that for sure. Okay, so there, there's a mm -hmm. there's broad support to that. Um, but the point that Commissioner Extel was making around. Um, from kind of the must language in here. Um, how many people would support, you know, some form of a proposal that put things that were assessed to be low risk? And I think to Commissioner Thorson's point, we have to let the staff make that decision because we can't, it's not a charter question thing to do. But be able to take low risk things and either have them be signable by any attorney in the attorney's office or thing, for things that were low enough risk, maybe it could be delegated to department heads if you decided that that was um, who would who would support that notion? Uh, where where would be the staff's job effectively to decide where that line was and the risk between between what is risky and not risky? So if you would you raise your hand if you would support that sort of change? Not and we won't know what they're going to come back with to propose, so we can't it can't be specific. Would, but there would be a proposal. Yeah, like for example, uh, extensions as to time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like 10% of our Good contracts are. Come back with something. Yeah, they're going to attempt to come back with something. But, <laughs> but would, who here would be willing to consider a change like that that relieves some of the pressure on signing contracts? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 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 Does that give you enough direction yeah. that mm -hmm. it would? Yep. Um, one more. Yeah. Sure, Peterson. Um, okay. As I think about that, I, I do think about some things, some contracts getting renewed on a very uh, on an annual basis, and I even made the comment those are the ones that maybe uh, require less uh, of a look because it's we've gone through it year after year. On the other hand, would it be reasonable to put in a uh, for some of those? Students? I imagine they could be large amounts of money. It's just the same contractor doing something, sort of a five-year or three-year re review of those. So if the if the senior attorneys have not really you know, looked at that period of time before you take a fresh look. Does that make any sense? Uh, Chair, I will offer, I didn't mention this earlier, um, but we generally do not go for contracts longer than five years, um, just as a general policy. There are some types of contracts that just inherently are for longer, like the state contract, you get post-it notes and such. Um, but even just this week, I was having a conversation about our our, our operative purchasing contracts. And I asked the attorney, I said, when's the last time you looked at these? Like, maybe they should, maybe they could use a little cleanup and maybe we could all be reminded what they say um, and how many we have. And, you know, just kind of like do a little bit of analysis um, because we generally don't go um, for contracts longer than five years. Um, and we also don't, we also have some internal sort of, um, not a some policy is too strong of a word, but sort of the kind the kinds of contracts that auto renew, um, we we typically don't go for more than five years on those either. Just too much has changed. Yeah. Tracks up. I have to exit gracefully to go to a band concert for my grandson. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy your grandson. Yes. <laughs> no, you can't go. <laughs> okay, so um, I in the the things that I ask people to kind of react to here to give this dance some feedback. I tried to capture the ideas that seem to be getting traction. I want to make sure that I can do the same thing. Forward. Not seeing anybody anxiously. So. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah.
That's it. Um, 5.1. Uh, yeah. uh, go ahead, Chair Peterson. Do you need a motion to, to, to come back? No, I think, I think we've given enough feedback there. There's nothing. I don't think we have to act anymore. That looks good. I'm comfortable. Yeah. Uh, the next up is periodic review of the charter, and this is actually something that I put on because I it's an idea that I wanted to talk to the commission. So if you could switch back uh, uh -huh. presentation, there's just a one or two. Yeah, yeah. And so um, you know, since since I, the last time there was any sort of kind of systematic work on the charter was the uh, there was a set of charter amendments related to kind of like restyling yep. the charter. Adrian, page nine. Oh. Here we go. There. Yep. Right there. Yep. Um, and that, that restyled, kind of modernizing the language in the charter. That was what, two years ago? Before me. Yeah, it was a, yep. it was a long time. Um, and one of the things that I've thought about for a couple of years. Uh, but during the pandemic, I had to bring it up because we were. 04. 04. Okay, so it's 20, it's 20 years ago. Um, is that it, it might be worthwhile for us to set up a, kind of several year project of going through the charter and talking about parts of the charter? Just looking at it, reading it, and saying, does this still make sense to have in the charter? Is it something we're going to have? Proposing it over several years because the charter is a big thing. I don't want to have. At least my, my personal thing is I don't want to have meetings that run until 10 o'clock in the night, you know, week after week to go through the whole thing in the shop, but it would allow people to learn about the charter since going along. So there's a timeline that the staff put together on the next slide. Um, that's just intended to be kind of a prototype. And I think this is based on weighing the number of pages in each section of the of the sure, it's just, it's just Oh, so sorry. sorry. That's <laughs> we're past that page. Enough to point that out. Um, I think this. I think this is this is intended to be roughly based on the kind of sizes of each section to create something that we could kind of bite off each year and go do. And it could either be something that we do as part of this meeting, um, an annual meeting, or we could uh, look at that and say we're going to meet maybe two times or three times and have a couple hours each time to talk about parts of it. We could decide that we break into little committees and each committee goes off and looks at it and come back and make a report. I think we could be completely flexible on that. But uh, what I wanted to do tonight was just to get people's feedback on the idea of kind of going through and, and walking through the charter that way. See, see whether people felt that was a worthwhile thing. Uh, Commissioner Kohler. Commissioner Peterson, I love this. I get okay. very excited about it. I'm curious if we might be able to align it with with our terms, you know, like we're we here for three years. Is there is the terms when we renew or mm -hmm. how long is our uh, yeah. four years? I didn't know if I could challenge us to even, you know, rethink how we might approach it and be able to do it within a term length. Yeah, I, that, that'd be an interesting question. Would it be a lot? I guess I'd, it would uh, be a lot. Yeah, it, I, I guess I just challenge it. <laughs> um, Chair, I'll offer. Um, I'll offer an edit that could potentially compress it to maybe uh, closer to four years, maybe not, because I think it's what, six there. <laughs> um, the rules of procedure, um, which I propose to tackle next year, are have last been edited when I was a uh, senior in college, a while ago. <laughs> And they could use a lot of updating. Um, I could, um, I would, I, I, I provided copies tonight. You all could take a look at them just sort of on your own time. And at the 2024 meeting, I could bring um, proposed edits. Um, the reason I suggest this process is for those of you that were tuned in to the city council meetings where we updated our rules of procedure, it was, I think, an 18 month process. Now, much different situation there, and you know, there's with many more pages than ours. But this particular document, I think, could gobble up a lot of time, and perhaps um, wouldn't be as meaningful as marching through more chapters. And if you look at chapter one of the charter, very short chapter. And I put those two together on purpose because of how much time could be gobbled up with the rules of procedure. So chapter one has, for example. You know the boundaries of the city, um, the powers of the city, and then the charters of public act. We could tackle that in 
you know, 10 minutes uh, uh, until I explain it to you. But really, it's the all powers clause, which is the juicy one, 1.02. 1 so um, that's one proposed uh, time saving measure. Um, and I, I tried to kind of group topics together, uh, but I could, I could grow them I and mean, I could sort of be more aggressive and try and do it quicker. Other feedback, Commissioner Stanley. I have a question about terms. We're not all on the same term. Correct. All right. Uh, so for someone, someone's going to not make it through. Mm -hmm. You're trying to align this end up into a, a term. It's going to, some people would get through it and some people wouldn't anyway. So I'm not sure that that's, it rises to the same level of importance for everybody. Oh, sure. I guess, I guess the secondary question would be like, what's a, t long, a typical duration of commissioner? Like, how long has everybody been on here? We, did everybody make it six years? Everyone's been here for a while. Okay. Well, people, some people, <laughs> people, people come and try it out, I think. And <laughs> welcome to our new member bed. <laughs> I'm here for an hour, just about. And we'll yeah. see. <laughs> but some people come. My experience is some people come and try it out, and they're like, "Hey, this is this is my game," you know. And then there's people who have been involved for a long time, and I look around the table, and there's just a lot of folks who fall into that category. Well, in, in yeah. the, excuse me, Mr. Chair, the didn't the secretary always provide us with an updated roster? At the beginning of every year that showed the terms and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. yes, I have, uh, Could you do that? I'm running one, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Chair, I'll offer that we did um, a couple of years ago ask um, the chief judge, who you all are appointed by, if we could clean up the uh, very, very staggered terms that we have um, as just a way of being more administratively efficient for our process of filling and interviewing and all the, all the stuff that goes into um, your starting. Uh, and the, ch uh, the chief judge informed us that he did not, he was not of the opinion that he had the authority under state law to do that. I think that that's a reasonable position to take. Um, and the conversation ended there. Um, so absent a state law change, I think we're sort of stuck with the staggeredness of our process. Yeah, I guess I'll just like final note. I was thinking, uh, you know, as a commissioner, um, after serving terms or anything, it's it, it'd be fulfilling to be able to say that during my term, I've I've gone through and we've worked it, and you know, it just seemed like a really appreciative thing. And maybe we could even make it cyclical, you know, so that everybody that serves as a commissioner would have, you know, what I mean, the privilege. But let me let me ask a question before I call on you. If we, because I want to react to Commissioner Kohler's idea a little bit. If we agreed as a group that we were going to meet twice or three times a year to be able to have the conversation, it seems like that would give us a little bit more runway to address what Commissioner Kohler was talking mm -hmm. about in terms of that. Um, and that's a that's a little bit of a change in kind of the standing obligation of this position. And I wanted to ask folks, for example, if we were going to. We're going to try and speed this up a little bit, and the way we did it is that we looked at met twice or three times. We could be okay with that. Chair Peterson, um, yes, um, and I think it's almost for something this important necessary because going a year between some of those discussions, I think human nature is you're sort of end up either starting all over again or revisiting things and questioning what we all decided earlier, even if we were the ones who you know, brought it up. So um, I would, first of all, I, 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 I like the idea a lot of revisit, revisiting this. I would like to see us move more quickly through it. Um, and uh, if at all possible, for that very reason, I just think it keeps us all on top of it. And um, and, ju and just a comment on the staggered terms, I can see some advantages to staggered terms also. So not not a in my view, not a huge deal. Uh, but uh, I would weigh in and say I'd be quite willing to meet um, some extra time during the year. I, to the degree that we can. You know, every once in a while we end up meeting a few times during the year because the issue comes up. Mm -hmm. And to the degree to which revisiting the charter 
can prevent something that because of changes in uh, in law or changes to uh, who knows what out there in the in the environment, if we can be ahead of some of that thought process, that would be a good thing. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Taylor. And then Commissioner the uh, just as a point of information, uh, I was up for reappointment this year. And I did get to interview with the chief judge, mm -hmm. yeah, which I thought was very nice, very good. I thought so too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just see. Hunt. You know, in 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 the past, where where the group had had taken the turn at updating the charter, which sort of needs to be turned and updated, and it, I think at at one point when we had an outside counsel that maybe got started on that, but it seemed that we would get refocused as to issue oriented and things that and you know that there's a lot of things in here that are really archaic but we would get maneuvered to look at focus on something on there so as we look at this and i'm wondering if it's possible before the next meeting whatever it is there's some things that you see is there something that you can do redline make make comments on there that are just that could speed up the efficiency of discussion from um I think at one time we used to call that house cleaning. Trying to get me home. Mm -hmm. and, and it was to, to go in and look at it and, and see where things needed to be. Exactly. Wording change. You know, things of that nature. Okay. So go ahead. Um, uh, because we have uh, a new member, but also because it's been a, you know almost uh, many months since we last met, I'll remind you all that um, as a process internally at the city level, um, every sort of January, February, I uh, seek, uh, I give the, the executive team, the manager, sort of a, uh, a clock and say, I want you all to read an assignment or read the charter again, your annual reminder to read the charter, and then flag things um, that you think are out of date, need to be fixed, et cetera. And so um, in the, uh, this is, I'm coming up on my, uh, I think seventh year of being here at the city. And I think this is the first year that I have come to the charter commission without edits. So we have done some cleanup. I'm confident that there's other stuff that could be cleaned up. Um, but we, we, we have done some sort of updating both to address statutory changes, but also kind of procedure modernization. Um, for, I spoke on a charter commission panel a couple of uh, months ago, and I did a kind of a deep dive on sort of the history of charters and many years ago, many, many years ago, I think it was Dave Kennedy um, who drafted a model charter. And um, now it would be way out of date at this point, but many cities adopted that. And it was sort of very common and uh, cities, like I know that, you know, I can kind of always go to the same chapter when I'm looking for stuff because most cities have it all in the same chapter. Um, and, uh, and that kind of a document hasn't been sort of done in a long time. But I think it's an interesting exercise um, and to do a more sort of thorough analysis of what is everybody's, you know, of, of the finance chapters. You know, we pick some cities that we um, that we sort of, you know, some, some, I don't know, five cities or something that we're going to look to look at their charters. Um, in some cases, we're going to find language that's just like ours in chapter four or whatever, for example. And in other cases, we're going to find pretty different examples. Uh, and when I do do that, when I'm making a recommendation, I will do that exercise and look at a bunch of different cities' charters and how they tackled it and to get ideas and also sort of uh, issue spotting. And if I find something that I that another city is doing kind of pretty drastically different than us, I will often call that attorney and say, hey, your language is quite a bit different. Um, what, you know, is do you like it? Is it working well? Do you have problems with it? Um, because sometimes you find out like they want to change it too. Um, so that kind of stuff is going on behind the scenes um, before I bring something to you. Uh, so um, I could do that same kind of exercise as we march through the charter. I think that the task of doing it in its totality would be, um, a, I can do it if you want me to, but it would be a pretty tremendous undertaking. Um, I can certainly do it. Um, I think that it might be more helpful if we, for example, got some prioritization of like, where, where would you like me to focus? Just so that I would have a little bit more guidance on how to proceed because of all the stuff that we have already edited over these yeah. sure, years. Right. Um, and we, if this ends up being a fairly long process, obviously we still 
have the option, it may come to us because it needs to, of reacting to things that need to be changed as it, as it has in the past. So uh, I guess that would be, I guess in my mind, a, a reason, I mean, we also don't want to go through it too quickly. So I think we need to strike that balance. So yeah. uh, uh, I like, again, the idea of, of you know, some meetings, some extra meetings. The other thing I would recommend in terms of timeline and process would be, uh, let's have one meeting that is just a broad brush, go through the whole thing okay. really quick. So we all see how it interrelates and then we start to break it down. Just a, a really quick, uh, I, maybe it's not possible to do it, but really a broad overview of, of everything and how they interrelate. Mr. Go to my Chair, yeah. Commission. Uh, is is a charter on the city website? Yep. Okay, so listening to kind of what people have said, I'm gonna kind of make a proposal and get a reaction from people. Is that we agree that we're gonna kind of switch our schedule to meeting maybe three times a year as opposed to the current one time a year. Um, that the the first meeting that we have is gonna be the speed run through the charter, um, one giant shot. And <laughs> bring that, coffee. Yeah, bring coffee. And at the at the end of that meeting, I'm going to propose that what we do is we kind of as a group rank the order that we want to go. So we want to talk about finance. We can talk about finance if we talk about administration. We can talk about administration, whatever we decide. We set a priority that way, and then we ask the staff at that point to kind of lay out a calendar that tries to achieve what Commissioner Coder was talking about, and that's like a Roughly a four-year period, we get through the whole, the whole thing in it, depends on the time period, um, based on priority that we put down. Um, and then the question, question I have is that uh, perhaps because we haven't put it on the calendar, is maybe we can start that this fall um, as a timeline so that we can get it on people's calendars. So what do people think about that? As a proposal for, as I'm saying, at least one person not very excited about it. Okay. I like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chair Peterson, a quick question. Let's say we uh, spend some time on chapters seven and eight. Um, is it potentially is it possible we might amend the charter piece by piece or chapter mm -hmm. by chapter mm -hmm. as opposed to going four years and, and making the changes? Oh, yeah. actually... um, and number one, and that's why I kind of asked, asked for the broad brush overview. To what degree are there like interrelationships between these mm -hmm. different sections that if we make a change here, it's going to affect something somewhere else and therefore mm -hmm. we have to yep. tackle it. Yeah. Yes. Chair. Uh, yes. So, for example, seven and eight. Uh, seven is taxation and finance. Eight is public improvements and special assessments. They don't both deal with taxes. Um, uh, four and five, which I also grouped together. Four is nominations and elections. So the election process. Five is initiative referendum and recall, which is also on elections. So that there's some natural grouping that I tried to pay attention to here. But the other thing I just want to point out around this and make those expectations are set properly is that we don't, as a group, have a magic wand that actually allows us to change the charter by ourselves. So, you know, that, and the, the you know, for, for the sorts of work that we're talking here, there's probably, I'd say, two viable routes for it. There's the convincing every set of council members that it's the right thing to do route. Um, and there is the going to the voters route. And I think to Commissioner Thorson's point, if we are reviewing the charter, we feel strongly enough about something that we want to change it. If the city council doesn't agree with us, we're probably going to want to make that as kind of a freestanding question that's easily explained to people so that voters can understand it and vote it up and down. We don't want it to be in a bundle of here's 10 things. And by the way, hidden inside here is the one, kind of the, the one juicy part. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's, that, that when, we're, when we're going through this, I think we have to be realistic about that and get, either cast things into the category of we're gonna be able to talk to city council and agree with that. Um, or we're gonna put the effort into convincing voters that there needs to be change. Okay, uh, anything else on that topic? Okay. Uh, we don't have any hearings. Number six, we don't have any communications. Uh, number seven, so we'll go to number eight, which is the approving of the draft report. And 
And perhaps before we do that, because it does talk about the minutes that we uh, approved, I can go back, circle back around on I'll circle back. On okay, so I um, I went back through here, and I think the problem. Well, I don't know specifically where the problem lies because it was in 2021, but um, there were nine people at the meeting, and um, I have eight zero votes on my notes because. Uh, our now chair came four minutes late, and I think I started with eight when I was writing it. So the edit, I think, is actually nine zero votes. So Adrian had them correct until I think there's a typo on the top of page four or four of the minutes. I think that should be motion carried. Nine zero is my is my educated guess. Okay. Now you could leave it as is, or Adrian, do you have any other ideas? Um, I believe this was the one that. That is this the one where the recording may have dropped out. I can't remember if this is there was one where the um where we had the recording and it did not. I believe this the one when we were in the fire station, right? Yes. Yeah, that's this meeting. So we don't have a great audio recording of that. Um we, I believe we were in the fire station because we wanted to be far apart from each other. And yeah, and we did a WebEx and we had never been in the fire station and Adrian was brand new. And so I believe if I had to guess, make an educated guess, I would say top page four should be a nine zero vote. Um, because I think that that would make sense. That said, if you want to leave it at eight zero, um, absent any other indications, um, remind me who the Uber and the seconder were of the motion. Um, Oh, today was uh, Taylor and Thorson. Okay. Um, so I'm going to ask you two, are you okay with changing it to nine? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the motion now reads that to adopt the minutes from October 7th with the change in that final section. That's amended. Yeah, the method. Okay. Is there any further discussion on that? I would just add that it appears there's enough. Evidence, so to speak, that that was yes. whatever we say, real, whatever we say, real, the final decision maker doesn't the number of doesn't matter on papers this time, but having an accurate, it still passed. Yep. Okay, um, I will then call for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed, those minutes carry. Yes. So now we will move on to item number eight, which is the draft report. Okay. See the draft report on page 30 in the handout. Do I hear a motion to approve the uh, report? Chair sure, members, as background, if, if I may, um, this draft report is required under state law, which is why we why it's prepared. Um, it's one of those exercises that it's difficult for Adrian to do because it hasn't happened yet, yeah. right? And, and so he puts together sort of a framework. Um, and you see the blanks that he will fill in um, upon the conclusion of this meeting today. So it's sort of that's why it's called the draft report. Any discussion or okay? Mm -hmm. I move uh, Commissioner Barnes has motion second that report. motion. Second by Commissioner Dell. Is there any discussion? Okay, now we will pass to a vote. All of those signify approving an, an approval signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. Motion carries unanimously. We will move on to the election of operatives and appointments. The first one is the recording secretary. Um, and forever, since the recording secretary is Adrian, uh, do I hear a motion to appoint a recording secretary? So Second. I would, uh, Mr. Yes. Mr. Chair, I would uh, move to reappoint Adrian as okay. recording secretary. Okay. To reappoint, was there a second on here somewhere? Sure. Commissioner Taylor, mm -hmm. it's been moved by Thorson, second by Taylor to report Adrian as the recording secretary. Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All those opposed, motion very unanimously. Next up is appointing our attorney. Uh, so, Manner side is the current attorney, but your motion to someone as the attorney for the charge commission. We'll the Commissioner Stanley has moved to a second by Commissioner Thorson. Is there any discussion? 
hearing no discussion, we'll come to a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 So opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, next up is electing a chair. Mr. Chair, <laughs> I nominate Steve uh, Peterson to be okay. the Traffic Commission. Uh, nominated by Commissioner Thorson and seconded by Commissioner Hunt. I'll put you at the end there. Um, that I'd be reappointed as the chair. Is there any discussion? Now's the time to say no. <laughs> Now's your chance to say no. There we go. <laughs> I made the mistake of not opening my mouth quickly enough. Last year. We'll then come to a vote. All those in favor, be appointed. Say aye. 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 All those opposed. Uh, motion chairs unanimously. Finally, we have appointing the vice chair. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll uh, and I will open it up for nominations for vice chair. Is the current vice chair again? Here. Here. If uh, if the commission renovators will make to serve one more, I would nominate. Nominator to be reappointed as vice chair. A second, second. Been moved by Commissioner Stanley and seconded by Commissioner Thorson to reappoint Commissioner Weatherby as the vice chair. So you can put that on your resume. Absolutely, it's, it's already, already there. there. It's already there. there you go. <laughs> uh, any discussion? Um, hearing none, we'll come to a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. aye. Those opposed, the motion carries. Um, so the next up is setting the date for the next chart commission meeting. Um, and uh, given the discussion tonight, um, do we want to adopt this motion now, or do we want to, or how do we want to proceed? Given that? Can, I, can I call a meeting? Can a group of people call a meeting? Uh, chair. I'm looking at our 1997 rules of procedure, <laughs> and they indicate uh, that the commission at its regular meeting, which is what this is, shall write an agenda for its next regular meeting, which I would argue we have done. Uh, matters not on the agenda, da 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 da. Um, Sorry, I was not anticipating this question. I do not have the answer. I, I think this was a we were part of the meeting. annual meeting. Mm -hmm. We have to have an annual meeting for sure. Yeah, we so have to meet once a year by law, and we um, have our annual the meeting, chair. which is the first Thursday yeah. of the month um, in May. Yeah. Um, and we have at 7 p.m. We have that in our rules. We have to do that meeting, which is what's calculated yeah. here. Okay. Right. Mr. Fair, I would suggest that we set the date for the annual meetings so that's yes. official mm -hmm. and that we use whatever tools Special. we have or that you call a meeting you use whatever tools we have to try to maximize participation mm -hmm. and i'm guessing we're talking about what in september something you said fall mm -hmm. september fall mm -hmm. okay so um probably the only thing i would change in the handout then is in the title it's really not the next chapter it's the next annual that's yes. Right. Yes. Yes. So with that change, I would entertain a motion to adopt that date. Mm -hmm. Supervised by Commissioner Weatherby. Is there a second? Second. second. Commissioner yeah. Taylor. Moved by Weatherby, seconded by Taylor to mm -hmm. set the date for the next annual meeting of Thursday, before. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll come to a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Let's oppose the motion here. Um, prior to adjourning, I want to welcome Ian Klein, who's our newest member. Welcome. Uh, coming coming to this group, you get to meet you know the, the set of people who've been around for a while. I guess. <laughs> um, in the city. So I think it's it's actually really interesting work. Um, it the chart commission is really unique among the commissions is that we're not. We're not subservient to the city council. We're effectively peers of the city council, and sometimes people forget that. But we're we don't we don't report to the city council yeah. in the way the other commissions do. We act independently, um, and in the best interest of the citizens of the whole. And so um, it's it's unique in that way, um, and we get to kind of dip our toes in controversies sometimes as they come to the charter commission. And so I hope you find it interesting, and you don't run away screaming. <laughs> Design you want to be back. So, uh, so welcome. Okay. Uh, is there anything else to come before the commission? Chair, just a, a 
maybe a quick reminder that we're at the US Supreme Court, Minnesota Supreme Court right now. Okay. Um, speaking of things that have happened, um, we, we're still waiting for the decision um, related to the ranked choice voting uh, item that was argued on expedited review to the Minnesota Supreme Court. Uh, they have no timeline by which they need to give us a response. So uh, uh, I, I, uh, I don't have an update other than that, but when we <laughs> get information, we certainly pass it along. <laughs> I meant to ask about that. Um, is there a potential we might Need to revisit anything charter related on that? The chair. Uh, so the question, the question was, is it possible that we might have to revisit anything charter wise in relation to the Supreme Court decision? So, chair, there, there certainly is a possibility. Um, we don't have a, any idea what the what the court will do. It's possible that they may remind it to the lower level. Um, it's possible uh, and. Give them direction to resolve X, Y, Z. It's possible that they may tell us we have to put it on um, a, a ballot. Um, or it's unclear what they would do, um, but uh, we will certainly follow our rules of procedure and call a meeting and uh, communicate it with you as soon as possible. I know. Remember correctly, there's also ranked choice voting legislation in the legislature. Right now. Uh, Chair yeah. members, yes, that there right. is. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's very possible that. That may also create work for us um, and might have an impact on the suit at the Supreme Court. Mr. Biden, it might, it might be helpful to review what the issue is. <laughs> I think, uh, especially for a new. Yeah, uh, Chair Members, I think it might be um, given that it's pending litigation, I think I would. Um, Prefer to provide that in writing in a privileged uh, communication. Yeah. That would be okay with you. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. okay. Anything else for the commission tonight? Okay. Uh, hearing nothing, we are adjourned. Oh, yeah. Oh, we have the by motion. Yeah. No, I always move. Sorry, do I, do I hear a motion? Do I hear a motion? So, I hear a motion. Second. Uh, moved by Commissioner Thorson, seconded by Commissioner Stanley to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? I love to make adjournment motions. We are adjourned. He took it away from me. 2018 was tough. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>